we need to get our nutrients, our vitamins, our minimal, uh, minerals, and where we fall down on all of those categories, some of the misnomers. Yeah, and it's interesting, the Canadian Health Food Association, they commissioned a national survey to test Canadians' knowledge when it comes to natural health products and nutrition to identify some gaps of where we could be falling short. And it's interesting because BC overall did very well, but well, we, th we would think so. We're super healthy in <laughs> super BC. Super healthy. However, there were a few knowledge gaps that were identified in the survey. All right, so take us through. Just T starting off my over knowledge. here about honey being yes. good for scrapes and wounds, and that is true. Honey has a lot of therapeutic value. In fact, honey, interestingly, is the only food on earth that actually has no expiry date. It's naturally antibacterial. You can put it on scrapes and wounds. In fact, a University of Guelph study found that it was just as effective as some medications, some creams and ointments for healing the skin. I did not know until right now that honey was good for scrapes and wounds. I thought sore yes. throats. Yes, sore but... throats. You were right. Calming a cough, scrapes and wounds. And you can also use it to clean your skin and as a mask. In fact, right. if you go to the Canadian Health Food Association website, chfa.ca, there's a do-it-yourself honey skincare mask. So you can check that out. to love those honey bees. Yes, okay. there is. Vitamin C. That's what I'm guessing vitamin we're going C. on next. Vitamin C can ward off the common cold, true or false. True. A lot of people think it's true. However, that has not panned out in large clinical studies. Really? Now, vitamin C, all is not lost when it comes to vitamin C. It does have a lot of important value in supporting the immune system. But there isn't enough evidence at this point to say that supplementing is going to cure or prevent the common cold. It may right. shorten the severity or duration. It's also great for your skin, great for your heart, connective tissue, collagen production. If you're not getting enough through diet, then consider vitamin C supplements. But loading up on citrus, kiwi, also a great source of vitamin C. And, and shopping in your local health food store will give you some great options to boost your vitamin C if you need it. I take vitamin C daily because I take iron. And I've been uh -huh. told you got to take yes. the C with the iron. Yeah. That's right. That's vitamin C right? increases iron absorption. And where are we going here? Okay, so now fiber and probiotics. So in the survey, they were asking Canadians about the benefits of fiber and are we getting enough fiber? Most Canadians, BC in particular, Particular, realize that we are not getting enough fiber in our diet. We need to increase our fiber intake, and you can do that with hemp hearts, flaxseed, having oats and oatmeal, more more vegetables, adding those foods to your diet, taking a fiber supplement, and probiotics. The question was, is all bacteria bad for us? Most people in BC know that is not, that true. Is not true. That if is you not take true. an antibiotic, you should then be taking the probiotic you, to yes. work on your guts and get Absolutely. things back and rolling. We got to go to this Beneficial one. Beneficial bacteria, very important. Vitamin D. Okay, so. So the question right? was, can you get enough vitamin D through consuming whole foods? What do you think? I take a supplement every morning. Just Supplements to be are sure. critical. The reality yeah. is, to get enough vitamin D, you would have to consume 15 eggs, <laughs> three cans of tuna, or six cups of milk daily. To, daily to get enough vitamin D. So it's not practical. This is mm. one supplement that is really critical for cancer prevention, for immune system support, for healthy bones and teeth. Vitamin D. How much are you taking per day? Can well, you do too much? You know, you can do too much. Yeah. The the recommendations, most healthcare professionals recommend at least a thousand international units of vitamin D. Some go up higher, two, three, four, five thousand. The important message is to check with your healthcare consultant, right. your Make natural sure products advisor. That's a good yeah, point. Yeah, absolutely. So we've only got 30 seconds left, so. Okay, so we're talking about um, organic. Let's talk about organics because organics are so important. And the question was posed about whether consuming organic products can that reduce pesticide exposure. Yes, that is true, and that is such an important message that we can make healthier choices by choosing products that have the Canadian organic symbol. So shopping in your local health food store and focusing on the dirty dozen. So those are the fruits and vegetables that have the highest amount of pesticide residue. Right. Go organic when it comes to the dirty dozen. The but soft ones, the strawberries, the things that are yes, hard to clean, right? strawberries, tomatoes, right. apples, unfortunately also the dirty it, dozen. If you can peel it. You can go the other way. If you awesome. need that avocado and you don't have the cash, yeah. it's more important that you have the avocado Absolutely. than to have an organic. And, and bananas as well. You bananas. peel them so you can go. Look at the Clean 15 Dirty Dozen. And if you go to the Environmental Working Group website, you can link there through the CHFA website. You can find out more information on where you should be devoting your, your organic dollars. And, and I mean, it's, it's just right good now. health, reducing pesticides and harmful chemicals. Thank you so. for educating us, Sherry. We certainly appreciate it. Me. Follow on Twitter and uh, eat well, be well. I can't believe that about the vitamin yeah, D. Yeah, and Ooh. check out the chfa.ca website. There's a find a retailer tool, so if you want to look for the, your local health food store, you can type in your postal code and there you go.